Um, for those of you that are brand new to downtown council, just want to give you a brief overview. We are one of 10 chamber councils and simply put, downtown council cares about the future of our city. We represent Jacksonville's downtown business community, including major corporations, growing businesses, and startups. Our goal is to connect one another so that downtown and greater Jacksonville will thrive and prosper. We also pride ourselves on keeping you informed of local business and civic issues by bringing top tier speakers to our meetings. And I can think of nobody different or no, nobody better for this meeting um, here today. So we're so grateful to have um, Council President Hazuri with us to share more about what's going on in our city. Um, we typically meet on the first and third Friday of every month. Uh, due to COVID, we've been conducting our meetings um, via Zoom, but in-person meetings have been at the historic Old St. Andrews Church in downtown Jacksonville with breakfast provided by local bread and board and coffee from Martin Coffee. Uh, we will not have another meeting this month due to the holidays, but our next meeting will be in January, January 15th, um, most likely via Zoom at 8 a.m. It will be free for both downtown council members and non-council members. Again, for those of you that are not um, familiar with downtown council, I do want to share we have um, an incredible signature event. It's called Painting of the Paw Prints. So all those paw prints along Bay Street are because of the downtown council, and we organize groups to go out and paint them every year. This year has been a little different, but we'll still con continue on with that tradition. Um, all this important work couldn't be done alone. And so at this time, hopefully you have your Zoom on gallery mode. I would like to recognize all of our board members because they are amazing. So if you're a board member, can you please wave to our wonderful audience today? Great. I would also like to recognize our um, 2020 Downtown Council and overall Chamber Small Business Leader of the Year, Mr. Ben Johnson from Martin Coffee. He is um, on our board as well and he um, won the overall. So thank you, Ben, for all of your leadership and congrats on your success. In addition, I'd like to recognize our 2021 Downtown Council Small Business Leader of the Year, Mr. Jim Webb um, with Manifest Distilling. Congratulations, Jim. Thank you so much for, rec for being a part of it next year. Um, lastly, I just want to give a shout out to our new members. So if you, hopefully you're still in gallery mode. Um, if you are a new member, could you please wave um, to the group? I have um, Stephen Graham from Bait Security, Andrew Kids from Ernst & Young, Jerry James from Jackson Electric Supply, Marius Dobrin from Sawgrass Finance, and Jason Roth from Tito's People Guys. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce Laura Edgecombe, who is our programs officer. Laura? Good morning, everybody. Thanks, Gracie. Um, kind of like Gracie said, I mean, one of the most important things about our council is um, connecting um, the community with the people who are um, moving and shaking and, and kind of helping make decisions to move our community forward. Um, you know, mo we as a council are very um, mindful of the progress and of the, of the history of the past and of the progress in the future moving forward that we need to have. And we are very fortunate that right now during this time when there are a lot of things going on um, that we were able to get um, Council President Tommy Hazori to speak with us this morning. Um, I respect this man immensely and I'm going to tell you that he is in every sense of the word, a true Jack civilian. He, um, he was born and raised here, graduated from Andrew Jackson High School. He went to JU University, or JU Jacksonville University, um, which is, I mean, that is truly here. And then he has served as our mayor from 1987 to 1991. He sat on the school board um, from, I'm gonna have to look that date up, uh, 2004 through 2012. Um, been on council since 2015, and he is now our um, city council president, which I'm mute. There we go. His job is Sorry, Laura. It's okay. No worries. Um, you know, um, Council President Hosleri's job right now um, is definitely probably clocking in more hours than <laughs> anticipated, especially during a COVID time. But um, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot um, a, a decisions that the council, the city council, has to make right now for the betterment of our community. So 
Um, you know, we have asked council president to come speak to us. He has a list of topics that he's going to speak on. I'm sure everyone has a million questions. Uh, the way that that works is once council president uh, Hazuri is done speaking, um, go ahead and you can put your questions throughout the chat if you want, um, or throughout the presentation over in the chat box. And we, um, as downtown council, will moderate those questions. Uh, council president, once you're done with your presentation, um, I will field questions. And I'm sure with this one, uh, we will have questions that we aren't able to get answered. So I will send those over to you. And whenever you have time, <laughs> maybe that's a quick, just a quick QA. Um, you know, there might be a few questions. And then to that, with the changes that are happening, I realize that there are some questions you won't be able to answer. And we will um, most likely love to have you back again um, in the new year once some uh, decisions have been made. So with that, I'm going to go ahead. Um, Council President, and hand it over to you. Thank you again so much for being with us this morning. Yesterday, and um, talking about the light, Jay, and um, there are a number of things that are going on in the council. This seems to have preoccupied most of our time in the last month or two, in addition to our, our usual. Uh, uh, business that we conduct on every other Tuesday at our council meeting. I um, I do want to mention, I don't want to take anything away from the state legislature, but I was there for 12 years as a member of the Florida House of Representatives. That's where my beginning was as an aide uh, to the House Majority Leader for two years, Carl Ogden from Jacksonville. And I just wanted to kind of wrap up the public service because I think I've been a part of everything uh, that I was elected to. and. So you tend to know what lies beneath and a lot of issues that come and go. I want to thank the chamber and the downtown council uh, for the job y'all are doing. Uh, before I end this, I want to make sure I know what y'all's number one priority is. And I assume, I assume it's bringing housing downtown so that the business can uh, reinforce themselves and, and uh, those who want to start up and those who have been there that have been impacted uh, greatly, I might add, from the uh, from the pandemic. It, um, downtown has always been on every mayor's mind, it, uh, and along with the other issues that come around. And we have a lot, as you all know, especially downtown, a lot of projects that probably are gonna start falling into place after the first of the year, notwithstanding uh, the j -Lot issue that we're dealing with. Uh, you've got the Independent Life Building that's coming up. You've got the Laura Street Trio, all going to require some funding from us. The Independent Life, you know, was built, I guess, in 1955 when I was a member of the Jacksonville JCs, and that's where we used to have our meeting uh, under the old uh, Independent Life Building. And uh, now, after all this time, it's coming back to life with the new apartments. You're going to get a couple, three hundred uh, apartments there. I think it's uh, close to 200, I believe. Yeah, and. Um, and they're and having a grocery store downtown uh people have been looking to have that it's kind of a chicken and egg deal as all of y'all know you can't have retail without having people and vice versa you can't have people the dry cleaners the hairdressers the grocery stores uh and all the supportive uh, industries that uh, would normally come i was born and raised downtown so on liberty and ashley where the fire station is today exactly where it is and uh, we lived above my parents grocery store my other three brothers and i and so i knew what downtown was this is before the malls before uh the different uh, entities that came up around the suburbs and uh, as downtowns all over the country started uh dwindling but uh, they don't start uh, they didn't start really rebuilding until people came downtown and now we have, I think, close to 6,000. I think the goal of the DIA in the city right now is 10,000 uh, residents. And um, the more residents, the more taxes, the more taxes, the more ability for us to, we have a great tax base downtown, but uh, our ability to uh, help other uh, entities that want to come around. Keep in mind, we've got the Jacksonville Landing. We've got the old city hall site. We've got the old county courthouse site. We've got, uh, the Berkman Plaza, the second one, phase two. All these things are still up in the air waiting to you know, fall into place. And I think you're gonna see that if you talk to Lori Boyer, she'll tell you that the DIA uh, has been working on that for a long, long time. It just seems like you know, it's, it's uh, forever. And uh, the downtown started dying. I don't wanna say it's dead, it's not. Uh, back in the 80s, like most uh, downtowns, but a lot of cities, large and small, have come around and 
and uh, done their thing and it made their downtown, which is the center of all government activity, all uh, the city itself. It, uh, and every great city has a great downtown. And now the smaller ones, Chattanooga, where we just uh, got the new JEA director. He's the last three years he's been in Chattanooga. That city has grown. And, um, and we want to be a convention town. We want to have housing. We want to have the entertainment. We've got the beaches. We've got fishing. We've got golf, of course, and foot, NFL football. And I think it'll be here no matter what, in spite of what these threats that we're hearing. Um, I think that um, we're off and running. It just takes leadership, whether you're the council president or the mayor, and but not at any cost. I think it's very important that uh, as we build, uh, we can't give away the city. Uh, we must sell our city. And I think that's what we're trying to do as a council. And uh, I, I think to the person, if you want to start with a J lot, to the person, I think there's not anyone on the council that wouldn't support keep not just keeping the J. I don't want that to be a threat to us. It shouldn't be, and it's not, at least to me personally. Uh, I think it's all about uh, a fair deal for everybody. And we expect the developers uh, to to hammer out the best deal that they can get any developer, whether it's um, whether it's Mr. Khan as a billionaire or any other developer who's a billionaire. It doesn't matter as long as you treat all of them the same. But we need to also make sure that the taxpayers get a fair deal as well. And there's so many questions to still be asked and answered. And that's all I'm trying to do as council president. And I hope that several other council members are saying the same thing. Uh, I don't think being threatened by the mayor that they're going to leave if you don't do it today. You know, they've spent six, seven years on the uh, on the J lot. We only got the bill, and that's been revised three different times uh, six or seven weeks ago. So, you know, they want us to do in six or seven weeks what uh, they've been dealing with for many, many years. And you're talking about a seven to nine year completion date for, for the uh, uh, J lot for live entertainment for the apartments, some great things. I have, you know, I'm all for the vision. I, I support it a hundred percent. You know, we worked hard when I was mayor uh, to bring the NFL team here following Jake Godbow. I made that for the chamber's purposes, our number one economic development priority. It still is. I think it has a lot of intangibles, but also we want to make sure that uh, it's not 40 cents to the dollar, uh, but it's closer to 70. 80, whatever it might be, but there are a number of questions, number of concerns. The DIA shared yesterday with their report, um, which by the way was revised in the afternoon of the first morning they introduced it Wednesday or Tuesday, and then they came back with a revision uh, that afternoon. And then the same way with the, uh, the Jaguars and the development and the city of Jacksonville, they had two or three different uh, revisions. So as we get those, our council auditor has to look and, and have the same fiduciary responsibility as we do as a council to make sure that we're getting a good deal, that it's transparent, and that uh, we're doing our due diligence. And that's all I ask. But to you know, to try to do it overnight uh, before Christmas, a hurry up offense, if you will, uh, to me, that doesn't work. I think a few more weeks to make sure we get those questions asked and answered, uh, then we'll have a better idea about voting it up or down. And I think it'll probably pass, but the question is when. And uh, I am not in a rush uh, to get this thing done by Tuesday. Uh, the bill did not get a vote yesterday. I, I didn't think it was proper. We hadn't even gotten to our amendments, much less the amendments from the council auditor and the recommendations from the DIA. So that's still alive and well. Uh, whether it comes up, they'll have to discharge it from the committee. It takes two thirds vote, and also it takes two thirds to pass uh, this legislation. So. Uh, they're asking for over 200, well, close to $300 million from us as a city. And in return, I'm not sure what we're getting. And, uh, you know, they're reducing the size and the scope of, of uh, that whole area and what they want to do, but you don't see a correlation between uh, what we're benefiting from. We don't get any reductions. We have to pay the same thing. So those kinds of questions are important for you as a taxpayer. And I know the chamber is 200% behind it. I get it. It's downtown. It's still not the core downtown. It could very well be with Mosh and, and the shipyards, the hotel. Uh, but there's a lot on our plate, and you always will have that uh, with what uh, any NFL team uh, commands, demands, and and um, but what it brings, both tangibly and intangibly, is uh, is important to every community. And you're only one of 32 teams, so I think that's important to know. Other things that are going on besides our 
billion, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollar budget is making sure that we don't forget the rest of the city, you know, and we're not. You know, we need to make sure that all 14 council districts, like your uh, area councils, like we want to make sure that the infrastructure is going to be there, that septic tanks is a number one issue for us uh, because that's been left behind for since consolidation. Uh, we're looking to get dollars for that. But I created a social justice and, and community involvement committee right after I was elected uh, president, and it's going to address uh, a lot of the social issues, injustices, the justices, but more importantly, we're looking for recommendations. Um, Reggie Gaffney, who represents that downtown, uh, had the courage to give us close to $3 million from uh, his CRA, and that's the only funding that we have. Uh, so everybody's after it now to, to do different things for different projects, all under the auspices of social justice or community involvement. I think we're I think you're going to see this as legendary for the city council if uh, once we start appropriating these dollars and sending them bill by bill uh, to the council for their support. Um, we've also set up a workshop uh, headed by, uh, well, facilitated by uh, Councilwoman Joyce Morgan and, and Michael Borland to um, have workshops all over the city in addition to downtown uh, on, on our police, on our not about defunding but what we can do to make the police and the citizens have a comfort feeling between them. You see everything is happening nationally. We're not experiencing that, but we are experiencing a lot of murders. We wanna hear ideas from, from the public. We wanna make sure that the sheriff out there in the end, in the community, not just riding the car, not just visiting from time to time in the community, but there's community policing out there, there's community support out there, and officer friendly will be every police officer. But it starts at the top, it starts with the sheriff's office. Like any priority here in Jacksonville starts with the mayor's office. And me as council president just this year, you know, I'm gonna provide the leadership that, that uh, I can and should provide. And I'm sure it's not gonna make a lot of people happy when you stop a bill like yesterday or, or delay. Uh, it's not about Republican and Democrats at all. I, I don't wanna see that translate from Congress to the state to our local government because there's no Republican potholes. There's no Democratic potholes. We've got to be all for one. We've got to be reunited. Uh, and I think the country ought to be that way as well, that uh, we're working side by side and not leaving a single soul behind. And Jacksonville has a great reputation as, as not just being friendly, being progressive. Uh, what other city has the beautiful St. John's River, which is one of the nation's top 10 treasures uh, among rivers, I think under the Clinton administration. I don't think we capitalize on that enough. That's the centerpiece of what happens in Jacksonville, both the North and the South Bank. Now, I've had a lot of issues down here. I'm trying to talk fast to cover some of the things that you suggested. I don't, you know, the dredging that's going on, Moss is going to be a big deal. When it goes down to the shipyards, I think that's going to be the gravitas for, for a lot of activity down there. People coming off the expressway, off the highways uh, to visit uh, Marsh is already a great facility. And the beauty of, uh, it's doubling practically in size. So back again, off the St. John's River, on the St. John's River. And if, the, and if Mr. Khan does his four seasons, which is hard for any city to get, much like an NFL team, because it's not part of the brand, Jacksonville, a smaller city, it's usually a bigger one, but we're fortunate that he owns the one uh, in Toronto. And, uh, but along with the J-Lot, there are several hundred apartments, condos that are gonna be built. Uh, Independent Life is another one. And uh, there's a lot of going on, but now I wanna see cranes. You know, unfortunately, well, FIS is doing a great job in their commitment with their home office here. But, um, you know, the only governmental entity that's doing anything, but any, really the only cranes you really see are from the JEA that's building their new building downtown by the courthouse. So. Um, and I think that's that's healthy. It's uh, again more jobs or more you know centrally located, and uh, it adds to the ambiance of our downtown. But it also serves a purpose. Uh, would I like to see the school board uh, off of the river? Of course. But I think the school board itself. I mean, when I was on it uh, as chairman, or when W. C. Gentry was on it, when Brenda Priestley Jackson was on it, that was a priority for us. But it's paid for and uh, was paid for my first year. They owed a thousand, a million dollars, I think, and they paid it off. 
it, it was given to, not given to him, but Preston Haskell and others who built that facility uh, sold it to him for $3 and something square foot, which was some, an offer that you couldn't refuse back then, even though it was on the river. Uh, I'm sure the jail will be moved from downtown eventually. You know, unfortunately, uh, people cry out that it's on the river. It wasn't when we built it, when I was mayor, actually, they wanted it to be close to the courthouse and uh, they like, the, the old one on Bay Street, but um, oh, about the jail and the courthouse. But um, they um, right now it is on the river because everything that was in front of it, the shipyards now are all gone. So all you see is a jail that's down there, and a lot of people wouldn't want to see it next to a big hotel. But we built it then, and and probably pretty quickly because uh, we were overcrowded. We were renting spaces from from Columbia County. And uh, now after we built it, we were renting spaces to other surrounding Northeast counties. So those kind of capsulizes uh, the issues I've mentioned. Uh, I don't know if I oh, the large street trio, of course, uh, a lot of them are gonna be receiving local funds, uh, their own private funds. And that's exciting. And what's happening now, the Emerald uh, Necklace, uh, restoring the McCoy's Creek, Hogan's Creek, and it's all part of downtown. It's one, and Lori helped begin a lot of this, and now she's ahead of the DIA, Lori Boyer. So there's a lot of things going on, and I've tried to toss out issues that maybe you have questions for, and you're right. Uh, I'm not going to have every answer. Um, I try to know a little bit about everything that we're doing, uh, but um, we don't get all the information. This usually it's the last minute these days from uh, the administration and and that's the shame we need to have a better relationship it can't be done uh, void of working with the council as a former legislator uh, and a legislative uh, uh, body we worked with the executive branch we worked with the governor uh, they wanted to they knew that nothing could pass without the legislative branch and but you know i want to see i remember when i was mayor with john delaney and others you know they, we went over to council. This was in the old building. We went over, and well, some of them was in the, the present building we're in now, John Delaney and John Payton, but visiting with the council members, you know, having a relationship. Relationships are so important, uh, and you can't, you know, it's not about crossing aisles. It's about having the same goals and, and supporting the priorities for this city. And, um, and I think we need to get back to that, and we don't have that right now. We didn't have it with the J-Lot. Uh, we never had... Uh, any communication, uh, to my knowledge, uh, I certainly didn't as a president or even as vice president when when um, Scott Wilson was president. But um, you can't bring something to you the last minute. In this case, they worked on it for six or seven years. We got it a month or two months ago, and then it wasn't complete when we got it. I had to postpone the introduction of the bill because they didn't have uh, the element for the parking uh, lot in it. So we have to have a complete bill before we can file a bill and, and address the issue. So that's kind of a background. Uh, I am, uh, again, 100% for downtown redevelopment. I want housing downtown. I want the small businesses to survive. I've got a cousin that, that uh, has uh, the Desert Rider Salmon Shop and also High Tide uh, in the Steinmark building. Well, Steinmark's gone. That business has gone to heck, except for those coming from outside. Hogan Street's reviving because it's, it's, it's in the heart of downtown, and that's, both of them are sandwich shops. But, uh, but this, there's more stories than just Larry Hussery, for example. There's stories all over and about survival. And we do have a CARES package. We've got another one. Uh, we had a couple of them and helping small businesses uh, get restarted and, and uh, working with their rent, working with mortgages, um, and, uh, and also uh, keeping people uh, full, <laughs> feeding a lot of people that, as you've seen, the lines all over the country uh, by the thousands uh, who are looking for, for help uh, in mortgage, in rent, in house mortgage payments, in uh, just health care, as well as uh, trying to maintain uh, the family and, and feed their family. So this has been a tough year. It truly is a leap year. I wish it we'd leaped. I had lung surgery. Uh, we had this. And there's always something that pops up. It's like a walk -a Hopefully with the, with the uh, shots that we'll be getting or the, or the, uh, the vaccines that hopefully will be coming out soon, that, uh, that they'll be effective 
and you'll see a great reduction. And people need to wear the mask. I know the governor says it's not mandated. The mayor says it would be, but I don't think he can mandate it now that the governor did his edict. But uh, it has shown that uh, it makes a difference. And a lot of people don't believe in it. And then unfortunately, some of them die. And uh, not because of the mask, but because they just don't pay attention to the little things they can do uh, to prevent the number of deaths that we have every day in Jacksonville's close to 600. And uh, I remember we have a Panera table in Mandarin that a bunch of us, you know, all little breakfast areas have their thing. And and uh, one of the first people to die was a gentleman that was at our table. He was number four. And, uh, you know, you don't expect it. He went to the hospital with, they thought, pneumonia. And a week later, he died of the coronavirus. So that's a big that's a big deal here. And um, we've got to get past that. And it's it's been a long haul. But so I'm just kind of giving you thoughts and ideas. I'm trying to do the best I can as council president to make sure that uh, that I lead. You know, I'm a councilman at large. And uh, yes, you have a, a stronger position as the president. And some may like what I do on the council now and some may not. But uh, what decisions I make, I'm trying to make uh, for our people, for our taxpayers, for everyone, not just a select few. So, but we know we have a lot of issues out there. We're getting ready to start our reapportionment committee, which will continue to the next through the next council president because the census doesn't come out until uh, the spring. And so, but we have to get started on that. Uh, we have a JSEP uh, subcommittee that uh, uh, Jacoby Pittman is, is heading up. It'll be winding down. We have the JEA uh, investigatory uh, committee that I'm now on, replacing Scott uh, Wilson. And uh, that report will come out the 1st of January, first week or so of January, but it'll be prepared, it'll be ready. It's in draft form now, but it'll be ready uh, at the end of December. So, uh, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tough report. It's, you know, we can't, we don't do criminal activity, but we do do ethics and there's gonna be a number of bills that's going to come out of that in addition to what we have now, that's going to you know, fill in some holes in our charter as it relates to the Jacksonville Electric Authority. And so with that, I'll kind of wind up and, and uh, see what our time is. 8.30, I think I hit the right note. Uh, let's um, mm -hmm. open up for questions and uh, let me thank you again for inviting me. It, um, I don't get these early morning Where's my breakfast? That's what I'm looking for. You know, I thought this was something that you're serving through the screen. You know, this is like poltergeist. And, uh, but I guess that doesn't work that way. But if you I'm, come right on board, I'll feed you. We uh, open the whole <laughs> Hey, Tommy, if you took that background out, are you at Where's Panera right from, now? Roth? Hey, boy, you're everywhere. Are you at Panera right now if you took down that background? You what? Are you at Panera right now if you took down that background? No, I haven't been to Panera since March. Uh, except, except to pick up stuff. No, I've tried to stay away. Having a lung transplant and with the coronavirus, you're doubling down on death, really. It, uh, you have to avoid infections and, and uh, prevent um, uh, rejections. And that's a constant thing for any transplant patient. But, and lung is probably the, the hardest one to get through. And so far, knock on wood, everything's been, well, you hear me. So came back after a month. I watched every council meeting from the first meeting three days or so after my surgery. And uh, I said, let me in coach, let me in. So, uh, and I think we're, we're doing pretty well. Uh, I just wish we had a better relationship with the administration. Most of us do, but uh, right now, you know, you got two, you got a loggerhead between two strong personalities. And, uh, but that comes with the territory. But anyway, Steve, I mean, I, no, are you here? Who? I'm, I'm going to moderate the questions. I was, just, I was just going to ask you who's doing the questions and answers. I'm, I'm going to moderate. I'm, well, you're going to give the answers. I'm going to give you the questions. Okay. Shucks. Okay. <laughs> you can let me answer. I don't know that I'm going to have the right ones. So that's fine. <laughs> okay. So give me a second to kind of look through this. What, what we do is we have like a running document, right? Um, and so, of course, we have quite a few questions about Lot J. But in addition to that, um, let's ask. So sorry. Um, internet's a little slower today than normal. 
Um, okay, we, we briefly um, touched on MOSH and then you also touched on the fact that the jail is now riverfront property because the shipyards and all that and whatnot is gone. So one of the questions is that, um, or the statement goes, the shipyards is an environmental mess. Every time a project comes up, it seems to either stall because, it, it seems to stall because of the environmental cleanup. Um, it, why hasn't the city taken a position in getting it cleaned up so that projects are viable? Um, and for all the incentives that are provided in the past for the piece of real estate, you know, for all the money that was quote unquote given, that money could have been used to clean up the property. You mean Do you have any every, thoughts on shipyard cleanup? For every property, you mean? I mean, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of environmental concerns in down, especially the shipyard yeah. and now in Lot J. And that's expensive. That's another $3 million, for example, for, for Lot J. Um, and at the same time, you know, you only have so much money. We have to operate with a balanced budget. We've done a pretty good job with that. But, um, you know, we have to work with the federal government on, on getting funding for, for uh, cleanup, brownfields, and, and all the other that goes with it. Um, the, uh, I don't know that, um, that we haven't kept up with that. We have, but we spent a lot of money. Uh, I know the school board did because of money at the old Southside Generating Plant, you know, they were right next to the school board. So we had to pay, you know, for that little line between the district property. And as I didn't mention the district as a big project, that is a very big project. And it should have been, you know, they should have been in uh, digging three years ago, but I guess, you know, the finances of it uh, had to be transferred over to, to another entity that's very successful. And uh, you're going to see that happening very soon. That's going to be a beautiful piece of, of, uh, property where it's located. In addition, I have mentioned again, as I talk about these, I think about these projects, the uh, River uh, City Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. I spoke with the uh, manager of the, the development company from Miami. And uh, let me tell you, they're bullish on it with the new uh, apartments that are gonna go down there, the uh, restaurant that they're gonna have outside of that, the landscaping. I mean, everybody has a, a great rendition of what it's gonna look like. My issue is for always, and that's what the downtown uh, 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 DRI or the architectural uh, arm of it has to look at. And uh, I want to make sure that they stay on course with what they tell us, whoever it is, it's going to look like versus what uh, it ends up looking like. I thought that Daily Space was going to look like the Sydney Opera House, and obviously it doesn't. It's a great thing to have. And uh, so you can't get off course of what you want to do. Don't show a picture or a rendition of what you expect. And even though as exciting as it may be, then you're disappointed because it wasn't what you saw in the paper. It wasn't the plans that you saw on TV. Uh, it ends up being what it is. And uh, we can't, we can't uh, cheap our way. If you make a commitment for something, and that's where the uh, DIA and, and the architectural arm of it will We'll make sure that they're on top of it, no matter what project it is. Lot J, um, for example, live entertainment is going to look like it does in Kansas City and Arlington, Texas, and all the other cities that uh, that, it, that they have one. And um, and if it ends up just being, I don't want to say a shopping center. Uh, I know Paul Harden didn't like to hear that, but I'm you know we're not in the business, even though we'll end up getting under this plan the hundred million dollar business. Uh, where we put in 50 and they put in 50, but we own it. Well, you know, that's one thing, but, you know, our wheelhouse is not managing properties, not not these kinds of properties. I don't want to see another landing, which we cut the ribbon on, and Jake did a great job with the Rouse Company in bringing it here. And for the first 10 years or so, it was great. Big time restaurants and, and uh, retail in there, but as town decimated, uh, <laughs> decimated it, uh, we ended up seeing, uh, you know, not a dollar store, but, you know, close to it. And then finally a ghost town. And we don't want that to happen here. And again, it's a chicken and egg thing. Do you build that and people will come? That's not going to be the only thing that's going to bring them down there. We have to have attractions down there. Marsh is, is, a, is a big asset. They're going to come off the highways and the byways to come there. You don't want to see that happen for the, for the, for the um, live entertainment facility. You will if they have that hotel eventually, but um, you need to make sure that um, uh, it's, it has sustainability. And um, a football team, a baseball team, the arena. And, and that was one of the questions. Yeah. 
that's not gonna that's not gonna cut it. At least the first few years it won't. Eventually it will. Well, that was one of the things that was that was actually mentioned that what we were told for Daily's Place was was one thing and what we received was different. And so how do y'all, you know, what what control do you have and how do you ensure that the vision actually comes to fruition to kind of stay in line with what the overall vision is for Jacksonville, especially when you talk about like what, what Lori wants and those kinds of things for the um, redevelopment of downtown. It's interesting um, that you segued right into that. And that also kind of comes also, there's another question. Um, it talks about the, um, and we're clearly going into some Lot J stuff now. Um, it, uh, you mentioned that you want an increase in the ROI um, from Lot J to the city. Do you have a target number that y'all are more comfortable with um, in order to ensure that deal? Um, and do you expect the council to attempt changes to the basic financial incentive components of the deal? Specifically we, on that, that dollar, you know, and what the loan amount is and what that looks like. And are we doing a surcharge and hotels and all those kinds of things to kind of pay back the loan? Yeah, you know, we're nickel and dominant now, whereas wasn't much in there for us. And I'm not saying that we're going to have a better deal than, than the developer. Uh, obviously, we didn't do a great job negotiating, I don't believe. But that's, you know, that's part of it. Uh, but, you know, we'd like to be a part, not of the negotiations, but have input on what we expect. You can't just say like the JEA, here it is, we want to sell it. And then you, you got the same pattern. And uh, that doesn't sit well with me personally, because it's deja vu all over again, right. not, to, not to be repetitive. But, um, you know, where it comes to the last minute and all of a sudden, what's happening? You know, they're trying to sell the JEA. Then they did this, what they call the PUP, which uh, was really devastating. And it, it stopped it in its tracks from even considering the sale. You know, something like that could have gotten great consideration uh, and careful scrutiny, but not say here, now we're, we're going to hurry it up that they're putting pressure on us talking about the administration. So they're going to try to go ahead and go out and, and get bids right away and try to beat everybody to the punch. Well, you know, that's not the way you do business. You can't have surprise attacks like that. And sort of the uh, J lot, I know, and I respect Mr. Khan, I expect Mark uh, Lamping, uh, Paul Harden does his job. He gets paid to do that. And, uh, and I think they do a great job, which I expect from every uh, developer. But, um, but when they, not them, but when they start threatening and we haven't gotten all our answers, it makes you feel like that they don't want to do any more negotiations. And when you have the council auditor come out with dozens of concerns and dozens, and some of them big, some of them small, and uh, and they don't even give you answers to most of them. And then at one o'clock in the morning, night before last, the general counsel just got the whole new slew of questions from uh, based on what we just received. We can't, they can't do it overnight. And yeah. you, give, you give them a revised uh, development uh, plan, and all of a sudden we've got to go back and look at it again and and uh, and read it all over again. You don't know, you know, what was added and what was subtracted. They did a comparable uh, side by side on what was changed and what wasn't. But it, the devil's in the details, and that's where I think it's so important for our council auditor's office, Kim Taylor. Uh, for any time. I mean, I had my issues when I was mayor with the council auditor, but I knew they were doing their job. You know, it wasn't something we were hiding. It was something that, uh, that's, that's our only hope. They're our watchdog and, uh, and they're very good. Uh, she discovered the pup issue. Uh, they did last year, last November. And um, the fact that they didn't uh, have our bill, their, the uh, bill complete for the development plan for J lot that we had to delay it two more weeks because they didn't have the, uh, the uh, complete version of, of, and they still are working on it for the parking uh, facilities, who owns what, how much we get, how much they don't. And they've made some minor changes, that, but you know, there's no, there's not been, and y'all can appreciate this. There's not been one issue that I know of that didn't, uh, one development uh, issue that hasn't had clawbacks in it some guarantees in it that if you leave, if you do this, if you do that, that we're going to get X number of dollars back. No, there's none. The only thing I think they have in there to speak of is a five year. I'm not leaving in five or not selling the property. In the five, five years. Do that though. Like, so like if there's not, so it sounds more like there's not like a hard, hard number or like this specific threshold that 
you have in your mind that you want to get to so much as as an overall there are many little things that kind of need to come to a point to make y'all go yeah, little, okay, we're okay with us we're getting some little things um i don't think it's a number as much as how do you revise and scale down this was yesterday the mm -hmm. latest you scale down on the property and uh how many hotel rooms or how much we square footage we were going to have from 45,000 to 35,000 and you don't see a correlation in it scaling down on the city's part on what we contribute to that. I think what we're looking for is uh, some safety and uh, a um, what, what I would and they call it the clawback but you know something that's going to tell us that you if you sell the the team and they say they're not doing all this and I you know you have to believe that but if you sell the team and you take it and you leave it that's one thing you still have the obligations here but if you pull out and go to London or wherever you go then I don't want to be stuck with a 230 40, and but there's nothing in there that prevents that and um, if you say you're not going then why wouldn't you uh, have a clawback like that just some guarantee Maybe you can't do, and you know what we didn't spend enough time on. I know you, it doesn't go hand in hand, but the fact that um, that they want to uh, uh, wait till this thing is is approved before they start into into the uh, renovations. That was my in. next question. Was especially I mean, because you know, Mark Lamping made a comment and he talks about those things, and I know y'all yeah. are actually going to be on a on Channel Four tomorrow. Is it Channel Four tomorrow morning at like nine a.m.? There's a whole slew of y'all that are going to be um kind of discussing these things and i know that he was vocal yesterday on the news um about that and so it's so like if if everything's waiting is that also part of the reason that there's like this hurry up i mean one you know the, the current administration wants to get it done during this administration renovations and and contractual stuff moving forward is kind of on hold is that the hurry up and are i know that y'all are receiving pressure but you know, I don't know, I don't know what their angle is, you know, for as far as why the rush, you know, why wouldn't you wait? And I asked Paul Harden that yesterday. I said, y'all been working on this for a number of years. You gave this to us. I give them credit two months ago in October sometime. And, uh, and y'all revised it two or three different times. And so we have to continue uh, looking at it as a council, as a city council, carrying out our fiduciary responsibilities and due diligence and transparency and, and knowing the questions we're asking, we're asking for answers. Some of them they didn't meet for a while and, and uh, I can give you great examples what council auditors told me. Uh, I asked them at not this meeting uh, Thursday, this past Thursday, but the one before that, two weeks before. And I asked uh, Kim, I said, uh, when was the last time you spoke to the negotiating team? And this really wasn't the negotiating, it was Jordan Ellsbury and, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the other staff, but not Brian Hughes, which tends to have the mayor's all ears, you know, and that's, you know, and so uh, she hadn't met with him. They may have talked on the phone, I don't even know if they did that. But I said, when was the last time y'all sat down since the time before? And I'm talking about the first, the very, uh, first meeting, yeah. Yeah, the very first one. And she said yesterday, that was the last time they had one scheduled for that Tuesday, but they canceled it and, and then they came to him on Wednesday. I said, when was the first time you talked to him since that meeting? Yesterday. Well, you know, that's what I mean by last minute stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they expect this the same thing with these all of a sudden. And then now uh, they want us to still get it out Tuesday. Uh, you know, they wanted it to be passed yesterday, but uh, we didn't even get close to the amendments from the from the city and nor the ones from the council members. So uh, I wasn't about to, to let that go. If they wanted to override that, they could have. They didn't. I think that's, that's healthy. Yeah, yeah. I think that's important. Uh, you know, if you if you don't vote for something, they're saying you're slowing it down. And if you do vote for something, they're thinking you're so you might be doing something right. Yeah. And, and you have to think when these meetings are going on and try to figure out uh, where we're heading and uh, I never anticipated that we were going to have uh, to vote yesterday. I, we had four hours, but we had public comments at the last, and, mm -hmm. and I wasn't going to avoid that, even though we only had like a half dozen or so uh, speak, but I wanted them to have that opportunity. But the council had all afternoon to ask questions and get answers, and uh, the more we did that, the more questions that still uh, needed to be addressed. Parking has become a big deal with some of the council. You can watch each of them and uh, where they're coming from. Some probably would have voted yesterday, irregardless of whatever.
concerns that we, you know, and that's, that's the shame of it. Uh, it started out that way. And I thought that's what a couple of the councilmen were going to do. Some of your own people that work for the chamber, for example, council member, and who I end up with arguing all the time. And I don't know why I, you know, I'm trying to keep this thing and have the decorum going well. It's, uh, it just seems like, you know, but I use the Columbo effect for, for um, dealing with this because there's always something, you know, so one more thing. And that's what we've been dealing with because it seems like every meeting we have, other things have changed. And we had to go back to the drawing board, not to change the, the overall picture. I don't want to go back to, this is a football literally thing. I want to go back and, and do the things that we can do. Uh, some of the things they won't move on. And that was obvious. I'm talking about uh, the uh, the Jaguars and the developers, but they had been very nice about it. I mean, yeah. they may be in a rush. Uh, I think if I had to, you know, I still blame the administration. And if they were to leave, the mayor has no one, to, which I doubt that they will do. Oh, but uh, but he would have no one to blame but himself. And uh, because I don't, you know, don't blame the council for doing their job. I would blame you for not doing your job in the negotiations. You know, you never negotiate out of fear, said Roosevelt, but never fear to negotiate. I think we feared ourselves to death on this one, but you know, it's close. And I think, you know, something good's gonna come out of it, but why tomorrow, why Tuesday? Why it, doesn't, it doesn't have to happen right away. I mean, I understand that there is that push, but I don't, to your point, I mean, there's, and there's so many other things that y'all have to do. This isn't your only job, right? Like there's, I mean, there's other, there's other issues and other, progressions and things that y'all also have to be working on. And so the idea that this is your single focus is difficult. I mean, we, you know, we all really want to know about, um, you know, I mean, we all care about Lot J, but overall what that means is like, you know, and someone actually asked this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it to you, you know, what's your, what's, what's your vision for Jacksonville? I'm gonna read it to you specifically because it was, it sounded really good. Um, what's your vision for Jacksonville over the next 20 years? I mean, you've been heavily vested in Jacksonville, clearly since you were raised here, but heavily vested within the city itself um, forever. So what is your vision over the next 20 years and how can we help you achieve it? Um, it, it the comment they made was, it appears we have a lot of needs without the necessary funding unless we raise property taxes or pass another better Jacksonville plan. So what's your vision and how can we help you get there? Well, you know, we have a master plan. Some think we don't. Lori will tell you that we do. Um, thing is, you just can't keep knocking down um, buildings and having empty spaces. Now, the landing site looks great. It's green. It's nice. They're going to have some activities there. But we need to start getting taxes. And, uh, and we have some great tax bases here in Jacksonville in the downtown area. And uh, it's a great tax base. So um, I think what we need to do is start filling those holes, filling those gaps, recruiting. Chamber does an excellent job in recruiting, but they don't all go downtown. And when they come to Jacksonville, uh, when I was in the legislature, they want to look at their education system. That's the number one thing they want. I'm talking about for housing. They want to look at uh, and there's other things that we have that no other city can match. But what they do match, other cities do match, is the incentives that they get. Now I'm getting emails from someone who says, why do we have to offer incentives, not just for, for the Jaguars uh, project, but in general? Well, it's competition, just like you all do when you have to go out and recruit. Uh, you've got the Charlottes, you've got the Savannahs, you've got the Atlantas, the Bruns. I'm talking about from a port standpoint. Yeah. Then, you, then you have uh, the automobile industry. I mean, our port is, is, a, is a great uh, moneymaker for, for this city. And... Uh, they're getting a lot of business. We're having a dredge over there now. And, and we had them speak a couple months back and um, it seems that they are business as usual, which is nice to hear. Yep. And so the vision is to, to build it and they will come to build a downtown, like maybe like uh, the live entertainment, but it can't just happen singularly. It's got to happen. You know, everything needs to start coming together. You can't keep waiting 20 years and then a new mayor comes in. There's got to be for anything. You've got to have sustainability in that plan that you're talking about, and uh, you need to carry it forth. I'm looking at back in my days as, as mayor, and uh, we, you know, we brought in 38,000 jobs in a four-year period. Of course, I offered a garbage tax, and that didn't go too well. But uh, 
the uh, and now we're still doing it, but they they tripled it since me. And uh, but that's fine. I mean, it was the right thing to do. But but uh, you just have to, you know, you have, you have to make some tough decisions. You know, you mentioned property taxing. Yeah, are you a proponent for raising property taxes until we? I'm can not get hesitant to do what we need to do. Right. And I think that you may have seen that happen this year if it wasn't for the uh -huh. COVID nineteen. Um, not necessarily. Some of the council members wouldn't vote for. And I've dealt with that in the legislature, but it's not about raising taxes. It's about at least going back to where we were. You know, I think Peyton, uh, or maybe Delaney, I think it was Peyton, and he had to increase some. Mm -hmm. But the others have not let in, in pension plan, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, and I chaired that committee in the legislature for ten of my twelve years, and um, and they had a very good plan, the Florida retirement system. But we were nearly a hundred. Well, we were over a hundred percent fully funded. Uh, it's probably 80 or 90 now, but that's still very good. For us, we we're at 44%, wow. and uh, that couldn't sustain itself. And uh, we're working our way back, but it's going to take a while. And uh, and I think some mayors spent the money uh, from that pension. You know, instead of putting it in the pension fund, they put some of that money into uh, to other projects, uh, and that was at the expense of of long-term you know payback and. And now we're getting paid back for it and it's going to take a while to recover from that but uh, so that takes away money from the budget that we necessarily wouldn't have had to do and uh, at least not to the extent that we had to pass you know let uh, build uh, to come up with another plan and whatever uh, i thought that we should have stayed in that i mean should have gone into the florida retirement plan because it's a very good system and it's uniform around the state for each county um but the vision is, is to have, you know, we've got the natural resources, we've got mm -hmm. the St. John's, we've got the beaches, we've got golf, we've got fish, we've got all of those amenities that, and the football team that's really, it's, they have intangible benefits, you know, because you're an NFL city, that's big when you want a 32. So don't tell me that uh, we're not trying to, you know, the mayor says don't, you know, if you don't support, you can say that you support it and not just to me, I mean, but, uh, then get off the pot and vote for it. Well, that doesn't work. You know, uh, you know that's easy to do. It's like wanting candy from a candy store. You have to get. And I'm not trying to say, well, I'm going to be out there and protect the people's, you know, money. But that they want that. But they want a good deal. And I think if if we come to some consensus about that, then uh, it's going to work. It and, work. Yeah. But but give it the opportunity to hammer out what we can. And it's got to be a give and take. You can, and I think that you see Mr. Lamping and others are saying now that uh, you know, it, you know, the process has to work. Well, the process to me is not take the next few months. I get the importance now that they have, a, you know, what they want to do, but it's got to. They've got to, you know, they've got to work with us. I don't expect the same deal. I expect for our part, though, a better deal. And I've used this expression before. Here we're getting the shaft, and they're getting the uranium mine. And I, again, I don't blame, I don't blame Mr. Khan or the organization. And I don't care if you're a billionaire again or a millionaire. Every developer is going to have money, obviously. Yeah. But I think it's about a partnership. He wants the same commitment from us as you know as we expect from him. Only it's not working that way yet. And hopefully we can come to some uh, consensus. And that's what I'm counting on. And I hope the council does too. Well, no, and like to that, you know, one of the things that we had said, and, and all the projects that you spoke to, actually, this year with COVID, we were very fortunate that we had speakers from, I mean, all over. Um, Jacksport came, you know, I say came, came to Zoom, <laughs> came to Zoom. Emerald Trail, we had um, Parks Now, we had um, JEA, actually the interim um, CEO for JEA at the time, like we just had a lot of um, wonderful speakers who've been able to kind of give us some insight, but it's interesting to talk with you now um, over kind of from the council side, what y'all see and think and feel. And as you were just, when you were going through everything, you're like, oh, and then there's this project and no, there's this project. And, and it, was, it was really nice to recognize that y'all as a council, especially you as council president, have all of these same exact topics that we are all as a council concerned about. Um, and we've been bringing in speakers to try to learn more about so that we can help 
you know, move everything forward, that they're all, even with lot J being so, so overwhelming right now, that all those other topics are also in the forefront of your mind. Um, I think that it's, it, it's reassuring, I guess, as a citizen to the lot J, but that while we do understand that it's important, um, that, um, that you're trying to look at everything else also. I mean, we are, we're actually, it's 8.59, I just looked at the clock, which means we are pretty much out of time. I'm so sorry that we were about oh, to no, run I'm late. Sorry. We know hey, we're uh, I'm so sorry. Know, I wish I'd given you a better idea for my vision, but I'm not the mayor and everybody has their own vision. And more importantly, when you have 14 council districts uh, and some of them represent the downtown area, but truly we all do because again, Every great city has a great library system. We do. I think we have an excellent one. Yeah. Every great city has a, a great downtown. That's the nerve center of every downtown. And uh, I've seen Pittsburgh lose 300. We, we had a chamber trip a few years back. They lost 300,000 jobs because the steel industry and all had, had gone to heck in a, in a handbasket. And they came back with more educational opportunities, computers, the whole gamut. And um, so I think that... Uh, you have to find your niche and we're heading in that direction. We're very diversified yeah. uh, you know, where we used to be the insurance and banking capital. Now it's kind of moved up to, to Charlotte and the new England area. But um, so you can't just sit on your laurels and expect, uh, you know, that it's going to be that way forever. There's change every day. And like <laughs> the, the competition, the competition is what's really uh, uh, what you have to deal with today. And there's a lot of competition. Some of them actually put out cash, you know, like $40 million we'll give you in cash. If you come here and we'll do this, whatever, you know, we can't afford to do that, but we can provide what's in place with incentives that, that make sense, grants, loans, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of loan, the big issue now is that 65 million interest free, you know, Lori uh, asked and they didn't get into details. Where's that, you know, where's that money going to be going? Oh, yeah. uh, and why interest free? Why can't you come up with other plans uh, if you need that money and how are we going to spend it? They'll just give you 65 million. And I'm being, you know, that's pretty broad, the statement I'm making. I realize that. And there may be some rhyme and reason, but um, I just don't know. And I hear from other developers that, you know, that each apartment or each condo or whatever it might be is so much per square foot. Others will tell me they're building something similar here in Jacksonville that's half the the half the cost and you know that's you can't control that you have to you know if you're letting them be in charge of the construction and go out and get whoever's building uh you know a lot of these issues are trust me propositions and right now um i just you know i think that we're getting where we need to go but uh we still have a ways to go and hopefully i think paul thought that we can hammer out something over the weekend but that bill did not get out. They'll have to discharge it. Uh, and I don't know they would have from the committee, which would be two thirds vote. And then they have to have a two thirds vote to pass the bill. To pass it? Okay. We have. When y'all meet on Tuesday, y'all just will probably go over some things and then it'll get moved to next month, right? The what? I said, the, on Tuesday, y'all will meet. There won't be any votes and then you'll just move it to oh, next month. Oh, I don't know if they try to pull it out of the committee. But oh. the thing is, we've got 50 pages of legislation to, to vote on. Uh, Tuesday. This itself would require almost a separate council meeting because we haven't done any amendments. We haven't done any amendments and that would be an argument and how you're going to vote something out uh, and we can't do committee work in a council meeting. We, you know, we've been accused of that over and over again. Committee work needs to be done in committee and that's why I put it in one committee as a whole instead of putting it in the say finance, obviously, uh, neighborhoods, whatever, that's appropriate for it, then they'll be doing Pete and repeat along the way. Put it in one and, and have the debate and everybody hears the same thing at the same time. And it just, you know, we did that with the HRO, with the Kids Hope Alliance, uh, and uh, those kinds of issues uh, that you know are gonna have some heated debate or a lot of debate, maybe not so much heated, but, um, HRO certainly was. I mean, people on both sides, uh, but we managed to pass it. And I think that's good for Jacksonville. You asked what's, you know, what else is, when I mentioned education, the downtown, all these things are what people look at. Jacksonville's fortunate, I think. We're on the river, we have a lot of amenities. Uh, and when I mentioned the Jaguars, 
intangibles are out there uh, in addition to the cost that we have to put up. Just having a team there uh, is beneficial. Well, everybody doesn't like football, but they know you're a football town. You know, that besides college, you know, they know you by the Florida Georgia game and all these. But um, the other thing is, is that, you know, to have an NFL team, you know, as expensive as it may be and end up being, uh, it's still one of 32 in the country. And we're the small town, us and I guess Buffalo. And so uh, we have, we have to offer, and I get it why he goes to London, but whether you have to go twice a year, you know, it helps make up for some of the dollars that, that we're not getting here locally, even though we can fill the stadium. It doesn't hurt to have uh, a nine and O team instead of an O and nine or O and 10. But, we had one, I think we won our first one this year, I think. Yeah, no. We had high hopes, but no, you know, you can't, you don't, you don't do that. You don't expend on the win loss, but, uh, you know, worry about that. But that's still, that's a nice feeling to know, maybe put you in a better happy place, but I don't know how much, how far that would go. <laughs> but, and I think he feels that same pain though. He doesn't like, uh, I'm talking about Mr. Khan, Mr. you know, losing no, no more than anybody else does. We want to be right there on top. So. Then we had to cheer for the Gators or somebody that's doing yes. good around. <laughs> or FSU, they can't even get a game going. You know, <laughs> they've already had three cancellations. And I know, uh, God, COVID has been such a thing. Has been such a thing. Um, I, 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 we usually don't run over, and I, I, I'm looking at the clock again, so I'm being mindful of the time because I feel like we could literally just probably sit here all day, get another cup of coffee, and <laughs> keep talking. It's very interesting, all the insight that you have. Um, so I'm, I really am appreciative. We all are appreciative. Um, you know, you had, I'm just gonna, you at the very beginning, you said you'd like to know like what our biggest concern is, and I will tell you as a downtown council. Um, our biggest con our biggest initiative is keeping everyone educated, um, and fully informed. keeping everyone educated and fully informed on what's actually going on downtown. So would we. So would we. <laughs> uh, right. Well, that's, you were talking about communication. I mean, that's a, to your point. That is literally the only like the the main way to get things accomplished, right? And so we are trying very hard as a council to get as much information out to anyone that'll join our Zoom calls or watch our YouTube or whatever. Right. So um, that's, our, that's, our, that's our big initiative. And then our number one concern is healthy, steady, um, sustainable development downtown. I mean, that is what we want. We recognize, um, you know, I've talked about this before. My, I'm like third generation Jacksonville and I'm raising the fourth and I want my son after he goes to college to come back to Jacksonville, right? I want a reason for him to come back. And so any, any and all of the projects that are going on and the sustainability of them being, you know, the, one of the key parts of how it's going, I, I, we thank you very much for being the voice as the president of council. I realize it's, it's, it's a stressful job. I'm sure I can only imagine, but we really, we appreciate you for leading the charge in the checks and balances that your particular branch is established for so um I, I know that the that Dan, uh, daniel davis we've had conversations he wants to move this thing forward and not get into personal this was a few weeks ago and i agree nobody doesn't want to do that but like i said it's that colombo effect you still have things coming to you when you think you're there so you can work with one uh, one product then something else is added or more you know, good or bad, subtracted or added. And then you have to go back to the, from our standpoint, from an audit standpoint, go back to, uh, to see where we are compared to where we were. And, uh, and I think that's what makes a difference. The, um, I think we all want the same thing. And uh, I think housing downtown, you know, when I was growing up, downtown was the place. I mean, I'd walk to the theaters, I'd walk to the library, which is the Bedell firm today. And, um, and, you know, but, you know, we had to get, and I have to throw this in, you couldn't have probably gotten a football team if we still had the smell in Jacksonville. That was a big deal. Yeah. The toll for another, but the smell to me, from an environmental standpoint, from a health standpoint, uh, was very important because, you know, as a chamber representative, when people fly over Jacksonville and they said, smell that, so what is that? He said, you smell Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Well, my colleagues in the legislature from Miami, would always kid me about that. So it won't be long, won't be long, 
but uh, that was a major coup uh, to make to get the city. And the chamber was 100% behind it, just like we were with the with the tolls. There's mm -hmm. some of those things that have to be in place before you can attract a lot of cities. You don't want to have that reputation. You want to have a reputation that that is a livable city, is a healthy city, and to have the medical complexes we have here. You know, I've been going to Mayo. Heck, we fun we authorized it back when I was in the legislature back in '84. And that was a fight between the, the, the doctors here in town, the sibling rivalry, because some of the Mayo doctors that were coming, uh, we were giving them, the bill was to, you know, to give them uh, the rights to come here without re having taken tests again. And uh, they didn't like that. And instead of, you know, getting your uh, medical exams going again, uh, much like people who come uh, from foreign countries when they, you know, they're lawyers or, if they're teachers or professors, uh, they lose that ability until they pass this and that. But let me tell you, going to that campus, knowing what Baptist is like, what St. Vincent's is like, what Memorial is doing now with this lung uh, mm -hmm. cancer was in the paper yesterday. We are a true medical complex. And uh, I'm thankful, I, uh, you know, not just for me, but as I see all the people in Mayo every day, uh, it's a one-stop facility, but so is Baptist and tying in with, uh, with MD Anderson, Anderson. Yeah. yeah, and all of them. I mean, they just, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a wonderful place to, I don't want to say die. <laughs> it's a wonderful. It's place. a wonderful place to to grow yeah. older. Yeah. <laughs> when you're born, yeah. when you die, you know that you got, you know, you may not have the house calls anymore, but. <laughs> Well, we're actually doing a health panel in the new year, so I'll, um, I'll make sure that you're invited to that Please. one. We, um, we, we host panels every couple months when we, when we can coordinate, um, but we have a really good one coming up. So. And I didn't mention the Shans. I mean, they do a great job there. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, so I'm proud of what we've done and where we are. It's just um, what you mentioned about your son, that was something that we were saying 30 years ago. We want them to come back after college to live and work and to raise their family. Also, we want them to, you know, one of the things you hear, and I'm sure you do, there's nothing to do. Oh, you know? all the time. All exactly. Time. And that's what you hear. And, uh, and I don't know who they compare it with, but they do, you know, <laughs> video store. I don't know what the it video is. Game, yeah. <laughs> I don't go to your local football game every week or, or um, baseball or, or basketball, whatever it might be. But, uh, and you can't keep them occupied. All that. I'd like to see us have even a greater uh, presence for our education facilities. Uh, back in my legislative days, we were trying to get a branch of the University of Florida's law school here, and uh, we couldn't sell it. I know some of the senators that were there at the time were pushing for it from our from our community, but uh, that didn't happen. But um, we are a good branch for Shans and uh, Shans Jacksonville University of Florida. So. Um, and, you know, it's just, you have to have a strong delegation to get some of the things you want in Tallahassee. I'm talking about the legislative delegation. So you need to have influence wherever you are. Um, and so hopefully that that's not going to die, that we can have that opportunity. I think there's enough strong people in Jacksonville that that, that part's not going anywhere, <laughs> nonetheless. Anyway, all that to be said. Council President, I, like I said, we could keep talking and I keep looking at the clock and realizing how much time has passed. And we have a bunch, we still have a bunch of people who sat on the call and listen to the rest of this because like I said, you're just so interesting to talk to. So all of you said, I do need to wrap us up. I'm going to pass it back over to Gracie so she can give um, our farewells to that. Council President, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm we're going to invite you back. So great, great questions. It's not done. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, um, uh, uh, Council President Hazuri, for joining us. Um, and uh, for those of you that are on the call, I hope um, you know you have an incredible weekend. I know some people had to drop off um, uh, for a nine o'clock meeting. Our next meeting will be the third Friday in January, which is January fifteenth. So we won't see you before the holidays. I hope you have a wonderful holiday and a happy new year. And we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Jason, come back again. It's good to see you once we said you lobbying this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all. Bye, you guys. Thanks, Thank Council you. President. Bye, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming.